We're back with Tech Day's 10 Minute IT Jams. Today we're featuring cybersecurity firm Bradware to discuss the Dragon Force Threat Group, which has been creating a renewed wave of hacktivism throughout the Middle East this year. We're here with Radware's Head of Research, Daniel Smith. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you for having me. Okay, so can you explain what Dragon Force is and if it's anonymous back in some other form? Yeah, of course. So right now we currently have Dragon Force. They're attacking a couple of different verticals across the Middle East. Um, they're a renewed hacktivist group. So when I say renewed, I mean, hacktivism kind of died out in 2016 with Anonymous. Uh, during the election, there was a little bit of infighting between the group. And because of that, we have seen a void of hacktivists. Uh, the reason why we say renewed hacktivist operation is because this group has picked up where old groups have left off. So no, this is not necessarily Anonymous. Anybody can wear the mask, but this is a new group of hacktivists that are reusing the same playbook as before. Okay, so is Dragon Force a threat? And, you know, in terms of their sophistication, are they highly sophisticated or are they quite basic? That's actually a really good question. I would say they're quite basic. Uh, when we were watching them and observing their, their, their actual campaign, we found that a lot of the members inside the hacktivist group were having trouble running outdated tools. When I say outdated tools, I mean, they're using tools that are about a decade old. But the weird problem about this is that they still remain a threat. Um, they're still very organized. There's still a large group of them. So when they do get these tools working, they do propose uh, a, a certain level of risk uh, to these organizations that they're attacking at the moment. So yeah, they are a threat. Uh, I wouldn't say that they're super sophisticated like some of the ransomware groups that we're seeing nowadays. Okay, so we're going to touch on uh, denial of service tools here. Are these still relevant uh, in 2021? Yeah, that's a really good question as well. Like I said, these tools are about a decade old, which is uh, kind of strange to see them still being uh, used and leveraged today, but today at Radware, we're still seeing hundreds of events every month uh, come in against our clients' networks from these type of tools. So yeah, these tools are still very relevant and they're still being used. The thing is that they're only really relevant against unprotected assets. So of course, you're not going to be able to use Loic, Hoik, and Hulk to attack these large corporations that have these large, robust security solutions. Uh, these tools are only going to be able to be leveraged against unprotected uh, assets that are out there. And a lot of times these uh, threat actors are looking for it. So some of the RDoS groups that we're uh, tracking at the moment, they're actually going out and looking for people that do not have protection. So their uh, attack has more impact. So some APT groups might have their own forums where they conduct their business. Um, but I understand that Dragonforce doesn't have its own forum. Why is this? Actually, Dragonforce has their own forum. Uh, they've been run out of a couple different forums. And, and that's kind of like the big thing about this group at the moment. Um, back in the day, uh, you know, um, hack forums and all the other uh, script kitty kind of forums, they pushed the DDoSers out. They didn't want anybody advertising DDoS attacks or DDoS services. It was causing problems with law enforcement. So admins on these criminal websites began censoring. Uh, it's, it's really strange. We still see it today uh, with ransomware. We see uh, uh, forms like exploit.in and XSS uh, banning members that are talking about or advertising ransomware campaigns. Because of this, threat actors are now looking to actually build their own forums where they won't be censored uh, by other admins. So what we're seeing with Dragonforce is they actually have their own form to dragonforce.io. Um, and, and they're able to communicate and collaborate with each other about ongoing campaigns. And some of the things that we cover in our report is showing how these attackers are actually using these tools and having conversations with each other about how to better leverage these against their targets. Okay, so we've talked about uh, Dragonforce in terms of the fact that they are basic, but they also pose real risks. So how can companies protect themselves from groups like Dragonforce? So it's very tough to protect yourself from hacktivists. Uh, that's because their uh, campaigns are not very um, well announced. They come out of nowhere and they're usually reactionary. So it's very hard to be prepared for such a situation. What you need to do is you need to have threat intelligence programs. They're kind of like a head on a swivel. They're looking around the threat landscape and understanding uh, what social or political issues might cause hacktivists to be reactionary. As, ha as we said earlier, hacktivists aren't as big as a threat as they used to be, but there is always a lone wolf willing to step up and wear the mask. And that presents a certain level of risk for anybody across the board. Uh, so we suggest that people, when looking into security solutions, find a robust security solution that also includes threat intelligence programs. Uh, so these clients and, and victims, soon to be victims, cannot be victims, but they can be actually prepared uh, to thwart such attack. 
Okay, so that was another Tech Day 10 Minute IT Jam, with, this time with Radware's Head of Research, Daniel Smith. Thanks so much for talking to us, Daniel. Thank you for having me.